What do you think are the actual chances of this deal getting through UK Parliament next week? Well, I think that will only become clearer if Prime Minister May uh, decides and when she decides to hold a further vote. Uh, from our point of view, what's uh, really important to us and to the European Union is that if we do get into a decision regarding whether a further extension period is needed, uh, that we're all clear what that extension period is for and the availability of that extension period doesn't in any way heighten the kind of economic risk that we're looking to avoid at the moment. Has the Irish government spoken to the DUP about a way forward? Uh, that's a matter for the British government. I know they're engaging intensively with the DUP, but the main negotiation body uh, on behalf of Irish interests at the moment is Michel Barnier and the European Commission, because this is both an Irish and a European challenge. But do you think you know relations are improving? Because you must be briefed on this, right? You're at the end of the day, the kind of you know the collateral damage of what's going on between the UK and the EU. Well, precisely what we're trying to avoid is becoming the collateral damage in any of this. And of course, we are aware of the levels of contact that are going on uh, with the DUP and the engagement that is taking place with them from the British government. From our perspective, uh, uh, we continue uh, to abide by the principles of respect. Uh, for understanding the needs and concerns of unionism, but we strongly believe the backstop is only in an insurance policy, and having that insurance policy is in the best interests of everyone on our island. Mr. Donahue, you are living this. I find it interesting. You've got your own family red line, and that your wife is British. It must have been quite something at your citizenship ceremony that you had a while back for your wife. Give us a personal sense of how silly a red line is in the sea or a red line is at the border north of Dublin. Uh, well, look, uh, Tom, what you've highlighted there is from an Irish perspective, our identities are very intertwined with that of the UK. Uh, the reference you made there to me is a reference that hundreds of thousands of Irish people would have and, of course, is one that has stretched back in many generations in terms of our relationship with the UK. I mean, what we're looking to avoid is the concept of borders. I do believe in the future discussions that will take place regarding the new relationship between the UK and the EU, that options and arrangements can be made regarding how we can have good trade between the UK and the EU. All we are saying is if that were not to happen, we need to have a policy in place to ensure we don't destabilise what everybody on our island and what the British government have been able to achieve. What we've seen in the last couple of weeks to a foreigner like me is absolutely extraordinary. And it seems like the serious conversations always end with the worry of Scotland leaving the United Kingdom or others, not Wales, but others uh, as well. Do you fear that if London gets this wrong, we could see the United Kingdom become fewer entities? Well, obviously, that is a key concern of the British government, which, of course, we entirely understand and respect. Uh, what Prime Minister May has said on many, many occasions that she is looking to preserve the union. And by preserving the union, of course, she means England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. And we fully respect that. But this is where we pair back, Tom, into the Good Friday <coughs> Agreement. And the Good Friday Agreement makes very clear that any changes in relation to Northern Ireland in particular can only ha happen on the basis of consent. And this and all Irish governments fully respect that and will abide by that. And in fairness to Prime Minister May, I do believe the value of this is fully appreciated by her. Um, Minister, what's your view on the extension? Is a long extension, so let's say 21 months, better than a three-month extension? Well, that's a decision that the <clears throat> British government have to make. And then when they make that decision, this is something that's going to have to be decided on the basis of unanimity within the European Union. What I think is more important at this point is that we're clear what that extension period would be for. Right. And what the Taoiseach, who is our Prime Minister, has said is that Ireland would respond back very generously uh, to any proposal that might come from the British government. Right, but so the UK goes to the EU and says this is the type of extension and then the EU, as you say, votes on it. What's the Irish position? What, do you, what kind of extension do you want? But you're asking me to give her a perspective on a decision that the British government have not yet made. 
And from my point of view, uh, the Irish government are participants in this process at the moment. And we have to allow the political process in the UK to reach a decision in relation to that. That's the sequencing in relation to this issue. And what I'd like to indicate to your viewers and uh, listeners here today is that the Irish government will look to be generous and helpful in responding back to that. What do you think the chances of a no-deal Brexit are? So I, we hear from the UK side that actually this has now been taken off the table and then we hear from Michel Barnier that actually they've never been higher. Yes, I think the no-deal scenario and prospect is still there. Clearly the decision that happened last night uh, where we saw motion passed in the House of Commons with the Spellman Amendment, which ruled out the possibility of a no deal in any scenario, was very significant. <clears throat> but what you saw happen in the House of Commons was the articulation of a political view. What we now need to see happen is the MPs and the British government articulate how they're going to realise that and what they are going to do to avoid that happening. And I, I know and I'm sure this is something the British government are reflecting on at the moment. Minister, your thoughts on all of this that we've seen over the last couple of months, and who knows what the path is forward again in London, maybe again in Brussels. Give us an update on the future of a reunification of the island of Ireland. I understand that's not one year out, but is that part of this calculus five years out, or for that matter, 50 years out? Well, from our perspective, uh, the only prism through which we are involved in this negotiation and perspective and process is looking to protect our economic and political interests. The only view we have in relation to Northern Ireland is one that is governed by the Good Friday Agreement. We do not believe at the moment that it would be appropriate to consider a border poll. Uh, we believe it would have very significant consequences on our island. We believe all of our political energies are better used at the moment, navigating our way through this current phase and then looking to what phase two of all of this will hold, which is what is the relationship between the UK and the European Union.